a lot of rappers still it seems like want to be Tupac. They want to have his popularity. They want people to love them like they everyone loves him. But why do you think no one's succeeding? <laughs> well, because I, this is what they fail to realize about Tupac. In order for them to be Tupac, they would have to die before they peaked. Right before they peaked, they would have to die. So if you don't like, you don't die. You, you can't do it. Bottom line, if you don't go die. You're not gonna be the next two five, cause it ain't gonna be the next two five. Straight up. On that junior market, them niggas was young motherfuckers that used to hang around that I used to give money to to get on the train to go home at night, little season and all of that. And the song that you had, you ended up connecting with Outlaws and them later. Yeah, no and I want to get into that later on. Salute to the Outlaws, baby. Salute to the Outlaws, but I want to sure. quote you from the song you have, the Bury the Hatchet song. You yeah. said, you said I would have taken a shot for Big any day. Believe it or not, I would have taken one for Pac. Yeah. You know, and I don't think people really understand how it wasn't just Big that had love. It's the whole Junior Mafia. Yeah. That yeah. Had love hell Pac. yeah. Hell yeah. That was like y'all. That was your brother. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just his relationship alone with Big. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like him embracing Big and showing Big that love and us knowing who he was at that time. Come on, man. That was epic for us. We we young kids, dog. Mm -hmm. 13, 14 years old. You know what I mean? Like and. Tupac was actually coming to our neighborhood. He'd come on Fulton Street in St. James and hang out with us. And, mm -hmm. you know, that was very rare in them times where artists, like, really came to your neighborhood. And yeah, really, not that neighborhood. Yeah, you know what I mean? And hung out with you, you know what I mean? Like, you know, us being 13, 14, we looked at everybody like, we ain't gonna never see an LL Cool J, you know? Right. We, ain't, we, ain't, we ain't gonna never see a, a Buster, you know what I mean? Like, that wasn't the thing to us, because we always thought we was gonna always be stuck here. So to actually see somebody of his stature, Tupac, come to Brooklyn, St. James and Fulton, where niggas is out there hustling, Niggas is out there with pistols and people getting robbed, and he's right there, regular, chilling, hanging out with us and talking to us, giving us game, and, you know, that shit really stuck on us, you know what I mean? And just his relationship with Big, like, we then we go into the studio, we see him all the time in the lab. And one time, Big sent me to go take him something to the studio. Mm -hmm. I mean, to his hotel. And I had to go to Big House and go pick it up, get on the train and go take something to him, and that was the first time I actually got a chance to sit there and just bond with him dolo. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, the really, I, like, he was talking to me, you know, like, he knew who I was, you right. know. I'm 15, 16, right. I'm like, this nigga Tupac know me, he know my fucking name. And I'm sitting there <laughs> smoking with him, and we smoked till the nigga fell asleep. Right. And I was like, yo, dog, you know, yo, I'm out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to Brooklyn. Let me know if you need something else, and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm here. I'll come do that, you know what I mean? And um, that was like my, you know, I, I love this dude, man. Mm -hmm. Like, that was just like one of the realest dudes I met at that time, like, mm -hmm. outside of just my crew and big, like, Cause the way he was just embracing, not just big, he embraced all of us. Like, you know, he knew my whole crew, you know right. what I mean? And uh, that was the love right there. So yeah, at that time, yeah, hell yeah, I would've definitely did that. You know what I mean? Like, cause outside the bullshit, that was still our brother. That was mm -hmm. still our friend, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I understand what happened. That was just the, you know, media and other people in, in our ears and that escalated some shit that didn't need to go that route, but mm -hmm. that didn't change my love for him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I really meant that. Right. Cause at that time, that's, he was he was family with us. That was our yeah. brother. You know what I mean? Like, we was fucking with him heavy. Yo, YouTube, what up? It's your homie Gab. I'm in the building. And this is Machiavelli Media. So, Louis C's did an interview with Talib Kweli. And in this interview, Talib brought up a, a line from a Louis C's song where he said, he would not only take a bullet for Biggie, but he would have took a bullet for Tupac as well. And a lot of people at the time was like, bullshit. And I don't know how I feel about that. I really don't. Because there's a couple reasons why I believe it. And I also have my reasons why I'm skeptical. Now, one of the reasons why I believe it, because at the time, C said he was like 15 or 16. And... If Biggie was impressed with Tupac and, you know, just at all, like, yo, I can't believe I got the nigga from Juice, like, coming to my hood, picking me up and bringing me weed. And this nigga made Brenda's Got a Baby and all of these things. And Biggie was still up and coming. Imagine how impressionable Biggie's 15-year-old protege was. If Biggie was blown away, imagine what Louis C's was thinking. Like, God damn. He said it wasn't no LL Cool J's. It wasn't no Busta Rhymes coming to his neighborhood. See, Tupac used to come to that hood 
and kick it with him. You heard Tupac say, the Junior Mafia was a bunch of little niggas I used to give money to catch the train home at night. See, there's a history. There's a history that none of us is privileged to. We just know the beef. We just know the diss songs. We just know the documentaries. We hear the stories. But then there's the relationship. Let me break this down. You ever see a couple that argue all the time? And you're like, God damn, I don't know how he could deal with her ass. She always nagging and fussing and mad. And then the females might be watching him like, he's so insecure. Look at him. He, he mad all the time. He always wonder where she going at. And we can't understand why they stay together, right? We just see the events. But it's the relationship that keeps them too drawn to each other. See, it's the interacting, it's the, the hugging, it's the kissing, it's the, the dialogue. It's something that we can't see. That we can see everything else, but it's something that, that unifies these two people. So I said that to say this. We don't know the inner workings of Tupac, Biggie, Junior Mafia, Thug Life. None of that. When it was all good, it was all good. When it was all bad, it was all bad. So I can see, like I had, like I said, how a 15 year old or a 16 year old could feel like, yeah, Pac is my man. He said one time Biggie sent him to bring Tupac some weed. Let's keep it real. Pac was in New York, staying at a hotel. And, uh, Big sent C's on the mission. C's had to go past the crib first and, and, and take Pac what he needed. And he said they sit there and they smoked until Tupac fell asleep. Now, I can tell you the Pac, he probably was thinking, yeah, C's a cool little nigga. Thanks for bringing the weed. Nothing more than that. But to C's, that was huge. That was like, yo, I'm smoking a blunt with Tupac. I'm sure he told everybody too. Yo, I just bought Pac some weed. It's always bigger to the little homie. To the big homie, it ain't nothing. To the little homie, that's humongous. So he probably did feel like that at the time. But on the flip side, keep in mind, that wasn't C's OG. Biggie had C since he was like 12 years old, 13 years old, straight up, maybe 11. And part of the reason why he liked Tupac is because Big liked Tupac. But don't think for one minute when it turned bad and Big was like, yo, really? Fuck that nigga. C's was like, yeah, fuck that nigga too. Oh, yeah. So when it was all good, of course he might have felt like, yeah, I'd take a bullet for Pac if I had to. But when it wasn't all good, nah, I ain't buying that. Nope, <laughs> I ain't buying that. Because he moved like Biggie moved. And see, that's the beauty of having young folks around you. It's a control element, and not in a bad way. Because they trust your opinion. You know what I mean? They trust your guidance. They move how you move. If they respect you, you know what I mean? So, if Big Rock with Pac, that was icing on the cake. Because I'm sure C's was already into his music and into his movies. And when Big didn't fuck with him no more, it wasn't cool to fuck with him. It is what it is. But do I think C's was telling the truth? At the time, yeah. It was situational. When it was good, 
Like I said, Pac was a star. He would have been down for whatever. When it was bad, when the lines were drawn in the sand, if Big said, fuck Pac, trust to believe, C said, fuck Pac too. He wasn't going to turn on Big. And you got to respect that. Tell me what you think. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to sub to the channel. This is Machiavelli Media. Turn on the post notifications so you'll be the first ones to get it when I drop that shit. Get a video a thumbs up, man. Stop playing. It's been a pleasure as always. I'm your homie Gab. I'm signing off. I'm about to hit y'all with the peace.